Hey guys, this is Dr. Nathan Cashin from Natural Family Health Clinic, again doing one of my book reviews. I've been doing this every week for the past five weeks, I think. Um, and this is uh, what I like to think of as the new Toastmasters. I don't like going out and talking in front of people that much. Um, so this is my way of practicing public speaking and sharing something valuable with you. Most of it has to do with health, fitness, movement, uh, anything around there. And so I'm picking books that I currently am reading or have read in the past and picking, if I can, five uh, poignant lessons. So the book today, I can't actually show you because I listened to it on audiobook. So I could show it to you here in my Audible app. Of course, it's going to be reversed, but it is called Everyday Survival. And I'll have the link down below for Amazon and for Audible, because this one I think um, is good to read and also to listen to. Um, it's a great story about what we can learn from our, uh, our evolution, from the history of our species, and how that affects what we do every day, how we live our lives. Um, the author, Lawrence Gonzalez, has written three great books that I've read all about survival. So I, I love the outdoors. I love uh, wilderness medicine. And I have a certificate or a certification in wilderness first, uh, as a wilderness first responder. And so I'm always interested in stories about survival. And I first came across his book, Deep Survival, uh, Who Lives, Who Dies, and Why?, and it goes through a lot of these same things, the, the psychology, the neurobiology that affects whether or not somebody out in the wilderness or stranded on a life raft survives. His second book called Surviving Survival takes the next step and that follows some of these people who have survived traumatic events, um, whether it was an attempted murder, again, living out at sea for 70 days or getting lost in the wilderness for weeks and follows what it's like for them to reintegrate into daily life. And this third book, Sur uh, Daily Survival, is all about how we have to survive every day of our lives. And so I'll start off with lesson number one, is that we operate based on behavioral scripts. Behavioral scripts. So what are these? These are basically small software programs that develop in our brain uh, mostly unconsciously or subconsciously, that allow us to interact with our environment, that teach us how to interact with our environment, and they guide just about everything that we do. Um, specifically, automatic reactions, and so we're very behavioral. Our movement is a human behavior uh, guided by the input that we get from our environment. And so, he shares some really great stories. He's a pilot. He starts the book off talking about a pilot, uh, one of the more dramatic uh, airline incidents where the pilot made a mistake. Um, but to bring that more to the average person, you can think of driving down the road. If you know how to drive, you have your license. You've been driving maybe for years, if not decades. And if you're driving in your neighborhood, um, a ball rolls out into the street, you turn the wheel to avoid the ball or maybe the child chasing after it. And you successfully don't hurt anybody, you're not hurt, and you may do this over and over. A car swerves in front of you, you turn the car. Again, you're fine. That becomes a behavioral script. And where these scripts can cause problems is say, now you're on the freeway going 80 miles per hour if you're on the highway in Utah, or 60 or 55 here in uh, Portland, and then something comes in front of you, you pull the wheel, because that is the script that has developed, and all of a sudden, the car rolls. So what's important to remember is that this learning behavior, these behavioral scripts that we learn, are intelligent. The actions that come from them may not be. And that's really the challenge when we think of uh, the subtitle of the book is why smart people do stupid things. It happens. Um, and it is based on the neurobiology of how we developed and how we learn. So that takes me to number two. So number two, if I don't lose it here, because it says my connection is weak, is that the best way to learn is to play. 
The best way to learn is to play. And I love this one because we are all natural learners. We all are natural, um, uh, very curious by nature. And children exhibit this so well. And when they play, they play often in groups. And so they are learning with playmates and they have to learn this group dynamic. They begin to learn accepted behavioral uh, or social behaviors. So playing is really the way that we first begin to learn. And oftentimes we lose that. And this is something that I try to incorporate uh, with my patients. And as we're learning new movements, it's really about playing. It's about trying to feel your body and trying something new, reaching a little further. Or uh, if you're a dancer, for instance, you play with that movement and you start to move in ways that maybe you've never done before. Uh, but that's how we learn how to move our bodies. That's how we learn to interact with our environment. Specifically with movement, the hands carry tremendous symbolic significance. So this is number three. Look at that. Three, the hands carry tremendous symbolic significance. And I really like this as a chiropractor because chiropractic, of course, is Greek for done by the hands or practiced by the hands. So hands are, are very important, um, not only therapeutically, but also for communication and for learning. So think of in, in your uh, community, in your social behavior, uh, how hands play a role, right? Shaking hands is one way that we show respect, that we say, uh, as I give you my hand, I allow you to immobilize it, and you are going to allow me to immobilize your hand. We're not going to fight. We're not going to kill each other. So the hands are one way to communicate that. You wave. You say hello to people passing by. Um, and he tells a story that, as he goes into archaeology and anthropology, how uh, these, these archaeologists are digging and moving so finely the small muscles and hands. And the quote that I love is that repetitive motions, speaking specifically of their hands, repetitive motions shape our thoughts and our brains. Repetitive motions shape our thoughts and our brains, specifically talking about the, the hand. Um, and he, I love the connection he makes between these archaeologists who are down in the dirt digging and moving and um, kind of pounding, and that that is exactly what our ancestors did for millennia. That is the movement that they did every day, and that's something that we now have lost and that we need to find again. And they do this together, right? So this brings me to number four, synchrony. So when you, when you look at our ancestors, we were social animals, social creatures. We lived in groups of about 100, 120 on average. And the quote that I have here is that synchrony brings people together. So this movement, the movement of the hands as well as the movement of the bodies, you can see this in nature, flocks of birds moving together and not necessarily having to communicate, but just in their movement, they can follow what the other animals or creatures are doing. Uh, this shows up in human nature and biology as well. In our society now, we look at dancing. We look at marching as in the army. So that uh, kind of grew out of this way to make everybody feel as they were part of the same group. As well as drumming. There's a great story about African drumming that you can listen to in the book. So, this brings me to number five, and this kind of comes away from these very specific applications of the neuroscience and paints a broader picture about life, because life is, in the end, about survival. And the quote that I love here, there's a few quotes that I'll share, but life is not strange or miraculous. It is simply what happens. We oftentimes look at life and look at the universe, look at the world that we're in, and think, and we, we make these connections, right? You look at a bursting star uh, or a nebula, um, 
and you can see the similarities in the human body, in the iris. I don't know if you've seen the TV show Cosmos, that's the beginning of it, right? You see the swirling galaxy and then it blends into the iris of the human eye. And oftentimes people think, oh my gosh, you know, this creator built the universe to reflect us. And actually that's not true. The, the quote is, life looks like this. Life follows the constraints of nature and the laws of physics. And so we are a reflection of everything else in the universe in that we follow the same laws and the same constraints. And so that is why the eye looks very similar to, say, swirling galaxies. Um, I find that really interesting. And what it leads us to understand is that if we pay attention and if we observe these laws and observe nature, we can enrich our lives. And so he ends the book with probably my favorite quote of all, that we can enrich our lives by craving to know and simply paying attention. So the craving to know more, to learn more about our environment and simply paying attention to everything around us. And if I take you back to the first book, Deep Survival, he makes the point that those who survive are those who simply pay attention. I hope you've enjoyed this book review this week. This was Five Lessons Learned from uh, Everyday Survival by Lawrence Gonzalez. And I do this every week. I try to on Thursdays. I'll post when I'm doing it. So you can click down below. There's a little button to follow. You'll get notified when I'm doing this. Please leave me your comments below. What do you wish you knew to survive the day? Um, and I hope you can take something from this and pay attention. And as always, keep moving. I'll talk to you next week.